Today I want to talk about creating your passion for life, and it's interesting that that's my talk title today. William can change the next slide. Do you look at this? Remember, remember my daughter, the one who was six years old when she started? Um, that was taken a few months ago. Carly is now an airline pilot for Horizon Airlines. You guys don't know this. That little kid who we just struggled through every math course and everything, but we were passionate parents, and we were like, we will help you do whatever it is. She and Trey actually got to fly together uh, on his second to last flight. She was able to fly in second to la his last flight for retirement. She was actually to be in the cockpit with him and on the jump seat because it's not, they're not flying together, but she's in the cockpit because she's a pilot. So they, she was actually able to witness her dad being in the cockpit and she was actually with him. And then he, we turned around and he jumped on her plane and flew with her as she was the first officer and he was on the jump seat. So, and just to let, so that's where my family is. I'm happy. My mother has now left. She now lives in Pompano Beach, Florida, which is about 30 minutes from where I'm at. So mom is, she's, her condo's cleaned out and on the market. Anybody interested? Sunrise Country Club. Talk to my real estate agent. Um, and so mom is there. She's got an ocean view from every room. She's got an intercoastal room. She's living in an independent living center or building. So that's the update on my family. So you're not going to hear that for a while, but I just wanted you to see that picture because passion for life, that is my passion right there. Those two right there and my mom. Okay. So... Here's the thing, you know, we're just coming out of this incredible, by the way, do me a favor, just for one second, please, just one second, drop your mask for one second. I want to see your faces. I know some of you need Botox, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Let me see your faces. I have to see your faces. Oh my God. You're beautiful. I had to see if you can put them on if you want. I don't care. It's whatever you want. We, by the way, everybody's six feet apart. I measured them myself. All right. The most profound personal growth does not happen while reading a book or meditating on a mat. It happens in the throes of conflict when you're angry, afraid, and more often than not, frustrated. You know, we've taught, we just, a lot of us just went through a year of being locked in. And we all looked at, you know, we're reading things. But you know what? It's not, it doesn't happen when you're reading. It happens when we come out of what this is. And now as we begin to crawl out of what this has been for the past 11, 12, 15, 19 years, uh, 19 months, whatever that is, as we begin to move our way out of that now, it's time for you to all start practicing what you've been thinking about over the past year, which is, I want to become more enlightened, and I, I, I took up yoga, or I've been watching these programs every week. Whatever that is, it's time for you to step in and put it into practice. It's one thing to talk about it and feel good on a mat. It's another thing to feel good about your life when everything starts to happen. And it's in the throes in the con of conflict that we begin to actually grow. I mean, I, I'm no, I, in, moving my mother has been a wonderful, challenging experience. And it's given me an opportunity to exercise every ounce of spiritual growth I've ever had in my life. And if it wasn't enough, my child, raising a kid, having a relationship, it doesn't matter if you have a mother and a father or you're in a relationship, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your growth has to occur when you start talking during those arguments. It, does, it, it happens when you think about it, but then once you start applying it, that's when it makes a difference. That's when the shift occurs. It doesn't occur when you're meditating on a mat. That may give some clarity. You may get some clarity from it, but it actually happens when you work it. Do you agree? So we've just come through a year of politics and of, the, of, the, of COVID and of just, I mean... It's exhausting when you look at the year we've been through. And let's not look ahead with that same sense of fear or anxiety. But today is a new day. Today is a new dawning. Today is a new opportunity. Not just for me and my own personal life, but for this, the life of the center. And we can live a passionate life when we apply ourselves and realize that during the throes of all these things that are happening, that's just the stuff that happens. And now we get to apply what we've spent so much. Some of you, I love you. you we've been here together for 20-some years, and some of you were here 47 with Dr. Tom. So you've been here forever. You should be like as close to Jesus as they come. <laughs> You should be able to apply this stuff, but you know why we keep coming back? Because every week we need to be reminded. 
I found a little church in Fort Lauderdale. It's the same one, CSL. And it, it's interesting because they have a brown carpet and they have the exact same chairs. <laughs> and they have a band that's pretty cool. And the minister's nice. And Trey, one morning, Trey said, are we going to go to church? He said, do you want to go to church? And I said, you know what? I do. I do. And he said, well, have, you, know, you, you know, whatever he says, you're going to debate. <laughs> and I'm like, well, probably in my own mind. But he said, so why do you want to do that? I said, because I need it. Because I've been teaching this stuff too, and it's just really nice to be reminded. And so I'm so glad we're all back in this room. I know we've had 400 shows, and that's a time for you to connect. But now to be here, and we're going to be here every Sunday now, and as, this, as things start to loosen up, more people will be here, and we've, you know, it's all going to start evolving back to a sense of normalcy again in terms of the environment. But I don't want to go back to normal I don't want the center to go back to normal of what it was. I want you guys to step into the possibilities of what can be. And there may be some technical glitches with the microphone, and we may have some problems in the meantime while we work out these kinks, but who cares? That's the small stuff. So, William, next. I have a confession to make. Yeah, next slide. William, can I take control or no? I'm addicted. I have an addiction. During COVID, I found an addiction. Shark Tank. <laughs> Do you know the show Shark Tank? Do you know, you know what I'm talking about? But think about it. When it comes to passion, what do these people do? These people who have created these products and they have lived it, they've thrown their life's blood into it, they threw their money into it, they borrowed money from everybody. And they go up there and they make this pitch. And they just put it all on the line in that moment. And talk about passion. You know those people. You, you've watched the show. Anybody, anybody, you, you watch the show, yeah? Yeah, if you watch the show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And these other people, the panel, they can be ruthless. They can be mean. And they'll go, that'll never work. Da, 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 da. And then some are like, you got a deal. And some are like, no, that's, and I'm done or I'm out. Or that, for that reason, I'm out. That's what they say. For that reason, I'm out. They use that line. Do you know how many times I've said that the past year? And for that reason, I'm out. So, <laughs> but I have to tell you something. That passion, that passion, that passion, even when they get rejected, the people who walk out having been rejected, they're like, I'm not giving up. They don't give up, do they? They're like, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to make this work. So they don't listen to those sharks. They have a passion about what they're doing. It's interesting. Next slide. Barbara. Oh, sorry. You can't fake passion. That's one of the panelists. Barbara Corcoran, whatever it is. You can't fake passion. People will see right through it. They'll go, mm, not feeling it from them, really. They pretend and they say the words, but they're not in it. Does that make sense? Next one, please, William. Here's something that I've been learning. We never lose. We either win or we learn. I want you to look at the past year. And I know people, some people have taken some real losses, and we've, we've had a couple members make their transitions as a result of, of COVID. And we've, had, and, and we've had other people move through the process. And no matter what's going on in your life, you can't stop, you have to stop thinking as winners and losers. There's winning and learning. I've learned a lot about what I don't want to be, what I don't want to do, and I've learned about what I do want in my life. And now some people will say, well, you know, there has to be a winner, there has to be a loser. No, there, does. there has to be a learner. Because once I find out what it is that I need to figure out on the other side of what I would have viewed earlier as a loss, when I reframe it as an opportunity to learn, then I move into a whole different mindset about what the potential is on the other side of it. Because once I think myself a loser, the universe says, you shall lose and lose abundantly. <laughs> you shall have it pressed down and flowing over. So the second that I take that label on of loser and not learner, then I begin to change things in my life. So you're a learner. We have made mistakes. God knows. Who here has not made a mistake? Please elevate yourself and fly out of the room. <laughs> Just 
up, go, right? Everyone in this room, and we'll continue to do so. I just want us to know that there's no losers. There's only learners. Next, please. Affirmation. I never lose, either I win or I learn. Say that, please. I never lose, either I win or I learn. Say it again. I never lose, either I win or I learn. Take it to the bank, everybody. Take it to the bank. Next one, please. My mission in life has not been to, just to survive, but to thrive and to show others how to ignite their passion for life, for love, for work, for creativity, and for health, and to use laughter and humor to create that spark. That has been my passion with all of you for the past 20 years. 17 is your leader, right? To, to, to create a spark, and because and, we laugh together, don't we? We laugh, and I remember Dr. Tom used to teach me, he said, what you do, Joe, is you set them up. You set them up with humor, and when they start to laugh, you push some principle in, and it <laughs> locks in their head because their mind is in a state where they're happy in the moment, and it's receptive in the moment. So we giggle and laugh and push some principle in. <laughs> and that's what we've been doing for 30 years, or 47 years here at the center. And James is funny, too. He just has more hair and a lot thinner, little bitch. <laughs> Next thing... <laughs> So the spark, the spark, I want you to continue the spark. You, God knows you got some new spark plugs coming in into leadership, and you'll have more coming in. We've got some intern practitioners that are going to be, my interns, stand up. Where are you? Intern practitioners, stand up. There are some new sparks coming in. And there's going to be some new sparks doing guest spots over the next few months. And there's going to be new sparks everywhere. Every time you turn around, there's going to be something new that can ignite something within you. Will you resonate with absolutely everyone? But they're not losers. You're there to learn. You're there to learn from them. I have found out that the people I have been most challenged with, and I'll say it that way, the most challenging people are the ones that when I look back in hindsight, I've learned the most from. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and setting up for a life that is less than one that you are capable of living. There is no, at this point in our life, after we've had to contract, everybody, there was such a feeling of contraction the past year of hiding and, 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 and being inside the homes and, and being very careful and, and all this stuff. And as we begin to crawl out of that, we need to crawl into our potential now and not live small. This center cannot continue to be what it is now. It needs to be bigger and thriving and out into a community that extends far beyond these walls. We know that 400, after 400 episodes, we have a whole congregation in Chicago. Did you know that? Our, our, one of our largest markets who watch our shows are in Chicago. Thank you, Jenny Weissman. So, because she posts every, uh, she would share all of the links to everything. It's, it's amazing. So we're talking to people in Chicago and all over the world now. This ministry, and this is why we had your board of trustees invest in new equipment and invest in new things that, are, that will work their way kinks out. It'll be beautiful. The sound will be amazing. When you watch it online, it's all going to be changing. Because you know what? It's the potential of what can be. It's the potential of what has to be now. We can't do, we can't play small. What we've learned is that there are a lot of people who aren't, who aren't coming back to the center because they're afraid. Well, you know what? There's a lot of people out there that need this teaching more than anything, and they will come in this room, and they will also begin to join us online. So we, I want you to all start thinking bigger than just CSL Palm Desert. There's something bigger that has to happen, and we need to go through the proper procedures to make that happen. And there's going to be a process that we will be leading you through over the next several months that will lead us into a greater sense of independence. And every one of you will be part of that. So I want you to just think about, you're just not here to just take up the oxygen. You're here to be a participant in the growth and ongoingness of this center and the teaching far beyond these walls. Can I have a ceiling fan, please? <laughs> next slide, next slide, please. When your faith exceeds your fear, a healing occurs. Remember we've done that? When your faith exceeds your fear, a healing, a demonstration occurs. Well, when it comes to your passion, when your passion is greater than your excuses, 
When your passion is greater than your excuses than to why, as to why you're failing or procrastinating. When your passion is, is when that begins to fe- uh, exceed your excuses and your procrastination, your life will explode. But you have to have the courage and the bravery to realize that your excuses are just that. And they're keeping you from your good. You're holding your good out here with every one of your excuses as to why you can't do something. Every one of us, it's, we do. We use our excuses to hold back our good because we're afraid to give it a shot. Get out and give it a shot. Live it big, live it large, because there's no second chances. I think the one thing that's been interesting about this past year is you look and you go, you know what, I can't take another day for granted. Because I don't know what the next day holds. You know, I had COVID. You know, I actually had it. My husband gave it to me, I blame him. It's just easier that way. He was, at the time when he was an airline pilot, they were sending them out and the people weren't wearing masks. Remember, there was the mask, wear, no mask, but at the beginning, don't wear them because they were trying to get the supply to the hospitals. Well, he comes home from New York City after an overnight where he's been in a crew van and all this other, and he, we, we both got sick. And I have to tell you, when I had trouble breathing at night, I had to have that talk with him and say, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. And if I go to the hospital, you can't be with me. Make sure I have a lot of battery chargers in my pocket because I may not be able to communicate. And if I, they put me on a ventilator, this could be it. I call him Homer. This could be it, Homer. And we didn't want to talk about it. We didn't want to talk. He just like, oh, don't be. I'm like, no, this is real, baby. We're watching it happen. And so that, that, that experience changes the way I look at my tomorrows. The losses that we've all incurred over time and then over the past year, those experiences prompt us to look differently at our lives. And I'm asking, I'm employing all of you. We have been through such a huge ordeal. Now is the time to take advantage of this day. I have had some really crappy days lately. I've been in the hospital for four days. I've had all sorts of crap go on in my, in my personal world, which is the result of stress and not working it out. What a great minister he is, Right. Keep yourself, okay, keep your metaphysical opinions to yourself. But I kept telling Trey, we have to find the good in this day. There has to be good in this day someplace. I don't want to spend my whole day swallowed swallowed up in this thing. Find the good in it. And I was passionate about every single day. We have to find the good. Not all of life sucks. This thing sucks. That's okay. That's one thing or two things or even ten things. But there's something that doesn't. And that's what we have to focus on. And we have to be passionate about it because where you put your attention grows. So I have to be passionate. We have to be passionate about the things that are working in our life. We have to look out of the world now with different eyes and a different sense of responsibility about how we're going to make it grow and not rely on other people to make it grow, but to look into each and every one but that's in this seat and say, what am I doing to contribute to the ongoingness of whatever this is that's exploding into good? What am I going to do with that? How am I going to be an active participant in putting that into the world? It doesn't matter if it's a phone call or an email or just a gesture by opening up a door for someone. It doesn't matter. You do whatever you can to be part of that growth process. Are you with me? Passion begins when you get a glimpse of your true potential. When you, and you know what I'm talking about. Everyone in life has seen that glimpse of themselves and they go, God, I want to be that. I want to do that. That's when your true potential starts to show up. When you get a glimpse of what the possibility is. And once you get the glimpse, you start looking at it and you go, how can I make that happen? And then the excuse monster shows up and keeps you from moving forward in the idea But the people who succeed and do so with a sense of passion, they get that glimpse and they don't let the excuse monster take over the process. Next slide, please. Your passion is waiting for your denial to to cave and your courage to catch up. It's just courage. It's remembering who you are. 
It's remembering who you are. Next slide. So I want to share some things that I learned, okay, over the past couple months. And these, some relate to passion, some don't, but I just want to share them before I leave. If you love someone, set them free. If they come back, it means that nobody else liked them, so set them free again. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? amen? Next slide. Do not judge my story by the chapter you walked in on. Just because you walked in on chapter 14 doesn't mean I've had 14 chapters of this. It just means you walked in on 14. Don't judge me by the chapter you walked in on. In fact, don't judge me at all. But if you're there, don't judge me by when you walk into my life. You have no idea. And people have no idea when they walk into yours what your chapters have looked like before that. Next one. There are days I see people my age out there climbing mountains and zip lining, and here I am feeling good about myself because I got my leg through my underwear without losing my balance. (laughs) Post-COVID, Trey and I had a lot of post-COVID stuff. We've had some memory fog, and and I couldn't read cue cards for a while. Um, And balance issue, we had vertigo. And I swear to God, that was me. I'm like, my friends are going, oh man, when we're done, we're going to go zip line. And I'm like, I just want to get my pants on without falling over. (laughs) Next one. This is back on topic. Working hard for something we don't care about causes stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. And you know the difference because one will raise your blood pressure and one will make you excited without raising your blood pressure. It will give you a charge inside without feeling like, ugh, why am I doing this? Has anyone ever felt like that? Where you go, ugh, really? And that's, and and then you try to pretend because you're a good metaphysician, oh, I'm fine. I love what I'm doing, of course. (laughs) Because you think that you stay that long enough, it's gonna make a difference. But it is until you change your mind, and then you change your action. Mind is the first step. Action is the second. If you don't take action, then it's just wah, 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 wah. Are you with me? Next, please. The only, Abraham Lincoln said this, the only way to predict the future is to create it. And I would say this, after this year, What's on your horizon? Start thinking about it. And do it big and bold. Don't hold back. You don't get big playing small. Another thing, another thing I'm going to say about this center, you, don't, you can turn the air off, the air fans off. I see ice chips forming on people's noses. <laughs> Thank you, William. One thing I can tell you about this center you don't get big, plain, small. And one thing I have always said since I started this center is we will never contract ourselves into good. You don't shrink yourself up to get bigger and better. And we have for the past, under my leadership, we've never had to shrink anything. We've been able to expand because the source has always supported the expansion, which means all of you and everyone else continues to support it. So don't shrink into anything in your life, and the center will, needs to expand so we don't shrink to make that happen. We step up, every one of us, myself included, even though I'm there, I'm still supporting the center. I know the value of what we do here, and it requires everybody to step up in larger ways so we can become a larger work in the world. We can have a larger voice and a larger presence in the world. Because if you've had something change as a result of attending here, then why can't we help other people come to see it? It's not just about contributing to the center. It's about contributing to the ongoingness of this work moving forward into the world. So it's not just about keeping the lights on here. It's about keeping this out there so that people can change their lives. And we can say, we did that. And you did that, that every person in this room is responsible for making that happen, not just in this room, but on the bigger level. So I want you to look at how you plan to support the center moving on. 
People are like, Joe's leaving, I'm leaving. Bull crap, show up. Give, it, give everybody a chance. Give all, every part of the changes a chance. Trust me, remember when we used to do the Lord's Prayer during the service with Dr. Tom? Do you remember that? How many of you were here with Dr. Tom? What, 10? Remember when I moved, when I took out the Lord's Prayer? You would have thought I had removed everyone's spleen. The phone lines were on fire because people wanted to do the Lord's Prayer. And I'm like, but we're metaphysicians. We don't do rote prayer. We do free-flowing prayer. And remember when I moved, just moved things in the service? There was a revolt. <laughs> Lay your weapons down and show up. <laughs> show up with an open heart. And get 50 more of your friends to show up at the same time. Because then and only then will we continue to do the work. That this center has been a, it's been a beacon of light in this Coachella Valley for 47 years. And every, and there will, okay, let me tell you this. Are you ready? Brace yourself, hold your seat. There will be changes forthcoming. No matter who is at the helm of this, the next part of this evolution, there will be changes, and there will be music changes, and there will be order of service changes. All of those things will happen. And you know what? Ride them out a little bit. Give constructive feedback. Constructive, not, oh my God. <laughs> Why can't you do what Dr. Joe did? Do you know how many times I heard that? Why can't you be more like Dr. Tom? I said, because I'm taller. And I weigh more. I'm not him. I was never him. And whoever steps into leadership here, they're not me. But you know the value of this philosophy. And so you fill up those seats to move this philosophy forward. And ride it out. Because there are going to be things you like. There will probably be things you don't like. Right? Right? Like a marriage, there's compromises. You don't divorce because you don't like a song. <laughs> Are you with me? So as I move into my retirement, I would like to have a level of expectation for all of you here and all of the CSL people joining us online. And no matter what happens, you give of yourself to this center so passionately and support it so passionately that the law of attraction will bring more people in here who are passionate about what is happening here and the changes they're making in their lives and the healings that occur as a result of what we've learned here. And if you do that, this place will, there won't be a box big enough for it to happen. And I have every confidence in the world that the consultant that we have hired and the guest speaker that we have hired is here to help us do that. Now, there may be things that are uncomfortable in the in interim, and I will be back to help, I, I will be coming back to help lead us through some of those uncomfortable things. And I'm not talking service things. There's some bigger things that are on the horizon of change. When that happens, I will be back here and I will help guide you through this because I haven't led you astray yet. And I never will. My highest priority has not been my marriage, has not been my children. It has been this church for 20 years. It's been number one. And this center will continue to do, and so you can, there's passion here. And I want you to keep that, please. Please. Is there another slide or am I done? <laughs> am I done? So until I return as your minister emeritus to do a talk, which will be soon, don't, it's, I'm not leaving forever, um, uh, all I can say is thank you, and I'm so grateful for having had this opportunity to laugh with you, to teach you, to teach myself, to love you through your pain, to hold your loved ones as they make their transitions, to sing songs that make you cry, to sing songs that make me cry, to say some words that maybe moved you and pissed you off. And, make, and also things that you said, oh my God, you had those aha moments. I have been given a great gift, the greatest of gifts, to lead you. 
for that I'm so grateful. And I'm not crying because I'm sad, because I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> I want to go and be at the beach and not have to worry about what Laura said is going on the other side of that wall. Um, but having said that, I, I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to miss seeing your faces. And I can't even see half of them now. <laughs> but we will. And when the time comes, I'll be back. And we will celebrate. And we'll have a piece of cake and say good job and we'll move on, yeah? So uh, for the official last time, it's so Andrew Lesson.